saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, God relented and did not bring on them the destruction God had threatened. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to God. Isn't this what I said, God, when I was still at home? Mm -hmm. This is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to tarnish. I knew that you are a gracious and a compassionate God, slow to anger, and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, God, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But God replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die. And he said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, Jonah said. And I am so angry, I wish I was dead. But God said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh? in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals. Well, hello everybody. <laughs> I wanted to introduce myself to you. Uh, I'm Jonah. I might look a little bit like your pastor, but really, I am Jonah. And I ask myself, how did I get from there to where the scripture t tells us we are today? Now, I have to tell you right up front that I did not want to go to this place called Nineveh. It just sounds ucky. <laughs> But I want to tell you a little bit about this town. This town is an Assyrian town. And back in the day, there were uh, incredible things happening in this town of Nineveh. Now, I know most of you probably don't study this kind of history in your history classes. You don't study about the Assyrian people back in the day. And if you did study, maybe let me put it in a little bit of context for you. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Third Reich? Yeah. Adolf Hitler? Yeah. Well, this group of people makes them look like a bunch of sissies. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's the truth. Because their plan, and they had one, their plan was to make everyone follow their way. And if anybody got in the way, they made sure they didn't get in the way. If you know what I get my drift, you get my drift, right? So to say that I didn't want to go to this evil place is truly an understatement. But God told me. God told me to go to this place called Nineveh. And I said, I am not going to go. I don't want to go. And matter of fact, if I was to go, I would have to stand in front of these people and they would know. They would know that I was not for them. But see, God is always greater, you know? If you can learn, you know what, let me just tell you, it's a good thing your lives aren't written in the Bible. <laughs> it's a good thing because I'm telling you, right? What a story. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. So I decide, ah, I'm 
going to give me a ticket to the other side of the world, the opposite direction of this place called Nineveh. So I get my ticket, and I board this ship, and it's leaving from the dock. And I'm thinking, Phew, I've got a way, I, I'm getting away from this, this place. I'm getting, I'm getting away with it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the seas come up and the winds start blowing and the sailors on the ship are wondering what is going on and they're saying, you! And they were pointing to me. You! Who are you? Well, I'm God's servant. And uh, they said, God. And I said, yeah, God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, the wind and the rain. Wind and the rain? And I said, well, yes. And they're thinking, like, this, you're the only one on this ship that is professing this kind of stuff. And so, the next thing I know, I'm swimming. Well, trying to. Because they threw me overboard. They threw me overboard. And I remember, I tell you, I remember, I open my eyes and I look up and all of a sudden this, the top of the sea is calm. And I see the sailors on their knees, thankful that I'm off the ship. Hopefully, I think, thankful to God. And then next thing I know, bam, it's dark. And, ooh, ooh, the smell. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's next. It smells. But there's air. So I'm like, okay, I'm still alive. What's the deal? I'm still alive. So I am like wrestling. And I'm like, what is it, God? You know, of course, God reminds me, I told you to go to this place called Nineveh. And you went on this ship. And now you've got thrown over. And you've got swallowed up by this sea monster. Some people call it a whale. And so, in my turmoil, in my struggle, in what, not knowing what to do, I think, well, okay. I got to surrender to God because I, I don't know what the next option is that God's going to do. You know, if this isn't bad enough, there, there's probably more turmoil down the line for me, if you get it, because there probably would have been. So the next thing I know, whoo, I'm hurling through the air, land smack dab on a beach. And the whale's probably thinking, whew, got rid of that guy. <laughs> Seems like everybody who transports me wants to get rid of me. <laughs> and that's because I was disobedient to God. So this is where I find my place in this. So I decide to go to this place called Nineveh. And I have to say my reputation precedes me. Because the people there, they, look, they have one look at me and they know who I am. And then, you know, it'd be like you pave a way. You know, you're walking along and then all of a sudden, woo, woo, and maybe it's the smell. <laughs> maybe it was the smell. I don't know. But anyways. So I get there, and God has called me to preach to these people. People, mind you, that I don't want to preach to. And so I, I do my prayer meditation, and I'm... Thinking, and so all of a sudden, these, these are the words that God has given me to speak. Nineveh, you have 40 days to get your act together. My words, my interpretation. You have 40 days to repent and get it together. Or else, I'm done with you. I'm thinking, all right, God, now you're talking. Now you're talking my language, because these people... Woo, Lordy. And so I deliver that message. I deliver that message. 
And then I decide, you know, I am going to go up to the hilltop. And I'm going to spend the next 40 days kind of looking around to see what's going to happen to these people. You know, there was a lot of people, but there were also animals, the scripture says. And so I go up and I take a seat. Man, it's hot. Whew, it's hot. And so all of a sudden, the next thing I know is there's this bush that's grown up over me to give me shade. Ooh, that makes me happy. You know, have you ever been so hot and you just need a shady tree to sit under for a minute? I guess. Yes. That's how. Well, that's where I was. I needed a shady tree to sit under. And God provided. <coughs> so as I watched, the night came and I fell asleep. And the next thing I woke, wake up and there's this worm eating my tree. <coughs> and so now there's no more shit. Only sun. And it's hot, did I tell you? <laughs> did I mention that it's hot? <laughs> kind of like the valley weather we had this summer. Yeah. And so I'm mad as the dickens. I'm just mad. I'm angry. Why would God want to do this to this, give grace to this, this people? Why would God want to do that anyways? Because they're bad, they're bad people. <laughs> and then God speaks to me and says, why are you all concerned about that? Didn't I give you shade for a tree that you didn't plant? <clears throat> for a tree that you didn't water? Didn't I give you shade for something you didn't deserve? <laughs> but you took it away. I took it away to give you a lesson, to show you the importance of my grace and my mercy. My grace and my mercy, even for you. Even for you. So I want to tell you, saints, Maybe you can learn a lesson from my life. That sometimes the, the way, the, the places that God sends us to, we might not like. <laughs> and, and you know, we might struggle with some people. And that's okay, because God has mercy. Our job, if we are following God, is not to run the opposite direction like I did. You know, one way or another, God's going to find you. Yeah. They say, you can run, but you cannot hide. <laughs> if you can learn a lesson from my life, stop running. Stop hiding. Stop putting judgment on other people where God is called blessed. Stop putting your agenda ahead of God's. You know what I mean? Because God is God knows better than we do. After all, those people that God saved that day, 120,000 men, women, and children, that could have been us. That could have been us that 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 God would, you know, if they if, if they didn't repent, there was something gonna happen, but they got it. They repented. And you know, I'm not that great of a preacher. So I know that it was a God thing. When God gives you seven words to say, or five words to say, you know that God is in the making of those words. And so I pray that you would let my life be a lesson to you. Again, don't run. <coughs> don't try to hide. Use the gifts that God has given you. Stay out of judgment. Because, you know, after all, it is God's job to repay, not ours. So I leave you with this hope, the hope that God is merciful, even to us, even in this day. God is merciful, and God knows our hearts. Amen? Amen. God knows our hearts.
take a lesson in that from me, from me, the Jonah, the prophet who gets a bad rap <laughs> for going the opposite direction, but who finally gets it after. <laughs> And maybe you don't have to take as long as I did. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run for now. But I want to tell you, next time I come, I want to hear your stories. I want to hear what God is doing with you. And maybe you can tell a better tale than me. Shalom. <laughs>